Hey, what's up everybody? We got a little, uh, cute little guy right here that I'm going to be taking a look at today. This is the, uh, the K-Bar, uh, Dozier Folding Hunter, which, um, you know, uh, everyone and their moms probably kind of suggested this as kind of a, uh, budget option for a very long time. And, uh, I decided I actually wanted to, uh, pick one up, so, uh, you know what? I did. Um, this one's, I guess, a little bit bougie. In the fact that um, it's using a D2 rather than, a, I think, AUS-8 that they usually do. Um, apparently, I have a whole bunch of oil on it. But, uh, yeah. So, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at them. First of all, we got a pocket clip. Uh, what's nice about this thing is, uh, yeah, right and left side. You just basically swap that... Um, this screw and the uh, the stud around, and uh, you can swap it to the other side. Um, when I did kind of uh, do that a little bit uh, earlier, I did find out that uh, this hardware isn't steel. Um, means it's most likely aluminum, but uh, yeah, not quite sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, magnet certainly doesn't uh, attract it at all. Which almost made me lose the pivot earlier. That's why I really felt like bringing it up. Because I expected it to uh, hold on there. Um, yeah, this is the mid-mounted lockback. Um, which uh, I do prefer a lot more than, uh, you know, the butt-end uh, lockbacks like uh, the Buck 110. This is much easier to, uh, to uh, uh, disengage and all that sort of stuff. And, uh, yeah, you can... Um, Take the thumb stud and flip it around in case you are a lefty, then, uh, hey, you also get a thumb stud without having, you know, basically one on each side. I wouldn't particularly mind it, but, uh, hey, they, they're doing this to, uh, save a buck or two. Uh, next thing up I noticed is, uh, the pocket clip actually takes a, a cue from, uh, the Spyderco, uh, Delicas and Enduras and everything, and that it actually lands not on the incredibly textured portion here, but, uh, you know, actually on a flat so that it's a little bit easier in and out of your pocket. Clip does feel nice and secure. And, uh, it is steel. So, there you go. I couldn't imagine somebody doing something stupid like making an aluminum clip, but, hey. So yeah, these, uh, these handle scales are, um, uh, I mean, most people end up referring to it as, uh, FRN these days, or fiberglass reinforced nylon. Um, there is kind of a name brand for it, Zyto, that, uh, some companies use and some companies don't. I don't know, but this wasn't advertised as being Zyto, so I, it's just, you know, fiberglass reinforced nylon. Uh, you can see a little bit of the uh, the mold casting uh, stem kind of thing there. So, yeah. And uh, you can see just a little tiny bit of a gap up there. Uh, squeezing on it doesn't really do anything for you there. Uh, next up, um, deployment. This is a lockback. Um, and as you can kind of see... Unless I really, really give it my all, um, it's not fully deploying via the thumb stud. So, that means it's uh, mostly designed for mash your thumb on there and rotate it around, kind of like you would on uh, a Spyderco. And uh, it's not exactly the most comfortable thing. Like, the action on it is decently smooth all the way around. Especially after I uh, put some drops of lubricant on there, which you can see keeps uh, rubbing off a little bit on the blade there. But uh, that's fine. Um, but yeah, um, it, it is a really difficult task to have a very comfortable one-hand opening feature on a lockback. Spyderco does it on a lot of theirs, but it still requires about the same amount of... Um, forced to be able to do that it's just that the uh, the hole is a little bit more comfortable on your thumb because this thing is um it's got enough grip on it for sure but um 
you know, it's uh, it might be just a little bit too much. <laughs> it's uh, it's a little pointy in um, some areas that uh, I don't personally like all that much, but that's certainly um, you know going to be up to uh, personal um, preference and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I do like the color of the, uh, the scales though, you know, nice and blue. I know the, the, uh, the normal version of this folding hunter here comes in a whole bunch of different colors, blues and pinks and of course all the normal ones, green and tan and brown and black and all that sort of, maybe not brown, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, this one, the, uh, the D2 variant here only comes in this, uh, kind of lightish blue kind of color here. Yeah, pretty light blue. And uh yeah, uh as far as the uh the blade shape, I really do like the uh the blade shape going on here. Um probably if you had seen my uh review of the uh the QSP parrot, I did kind of uh compare that to this guy. This one's um yeah, it, it's certainly under three inches. It's probably 2.8 inches or so because this actually has just a little bit there at the at the end oh well never mind i'm going the wrong way so yeah it's it's right around three inches there next up it's uh very very neutral in the hand uh just has kind of a uh, a little bit of a curve there and uh me with my uh large mitts um still very comfortable as a full four finger grip we got some nice jumping on the back there that's very effective. It's um, not too rounded off. So it certainly is going to grip your flesh, but it's not going to grind it off. Uh, let's see. Next thing up that I want to talk about is um, the uh, the fact that it doesn't have a sharpening choil on it. And, uh, you know, that happens with a lot of knives. Um, Spyderco... Uh, staunchly refuses to do so but this one very much shows you exactly why that can be a problem you can see basically we got the uh, the plunge grind that comes all the way down to here but the edge doesn't actually start and come to an apex until about here you got a big old flat portion there and uh yeah if you want to take um, you know, a couple hours to, uh, grind away at that very carefully on a stone. You can actually get it back there. It doesn't really affect the nature of the knife unless you're really trying to, uh, plunge it down all the way there. But it's something that I personally don't like the look of. So, there's that. Um, kind of next up, uh, just kind of a personal thing that I would think of is, um, you know, I don't mind the uh, the black hardware uh, for the uh, the pivot screw and the um, the uh, the pivot pen here and the uh, pocket clip thing, but with having the uh, the pocket clip, uh, the back spacer, and this all coated in, I don't know what it is. Uh, they refer to it as bronze, but that's more or less the color, not uh, how they've actually adhered it on there. But it's a very attractive color. I actually wouldn't mind having the um, the, uh, the thumb stud there having that same color. Just to, you know, I think it would be a little bit more attractive myself. But that's a personal preference sort of thing. Um, yeah, so next up we have basically the, um, the texturing here on the handle scales. Now these guys are aggressive. Um, they might not look like it until you actually get it into your hand. But yeah, if you kind of... Like, take a look at it. They are individual spikes that come to a fairly decent point. That gives you a lot of grip, and it's slightly less aggressive um, moving horizontally rather than vertically along it, but it's still very, very aggressive. Um, this would, you know, be fine if you're using it uh, in gloves or whatnot you know that would probably help out with a little bit of uh extra grip there but um this will certainly wear down a little bit over time but as it comes straight out of the box it's a little aggressive for for my tastes um it's more aggressive feeling than um than the uh the spyderco let's see 
I probably have them sitting around here. Uh, sure, here we are. Yeah, then the Spider Co's kind of. Um, I guess these are the uh, the the number fours. So this is the uh, the 3D ones. But even the uh, the ones before then on like the uh, the Endura and Delica three, where they had the uh, volcano grip or whatever. Um, they, they offered a heck of a lot of grip, but they weren't quite as aggressive as feeling as this. So there is kind of that to, uh, take into consideration. Um, yeah, I guess if you're, uh, looking at, um, working up a callus in a very, very quick amount of time, these will do it for you. So there's that. Uh, yeah. Well, the blade is a D2, which I certainly mentioned earlier before. And, um... I certainly don't have any doubts that uh, it's going to live up to other D2 kind of uh, steels because, well, K-Bar, even though it's a um, it's an internationally made knife in Taiwan, they still, you know, actually care about their product rather than just throwing things at the wall. So, uh, yeah, I do happen to uh, think that this guy is going to do a very good job over time, which means that this is a, a pretty great little budget piece, which um, I honestly don't remember exactly how much these guys in D2 are. It's probably like 35 or something like that, which I guess might be just edging out um, a lot of other knives that probably have D2 in that same kind of... Uh, same kind of size and whatnot, but they'll generally have G10 or, um, well, heck, like steel uh, scales or something like that. Uh, which brings me on to um, kind of one of its other merits and the fact that um, this guy has those Zytel handles uh, and there's no liners on there. Is the fact that uh, this guy is quite light. I'd like to start with ounces. Here we go. So yeah, 2.33 ounces, so two and a third. Or 66 grams, which is pretty darn good for basically a three inch blade. And uh, I know some people probably feel that uh, Zytel or, uh, you know, any kind of plastic handles sort of things are um, all sorts of bad. These things uh, will put up with a heck of a lot of uh, torque and torsion and everything, um, being the, uh, the reinforced stuff. Does a pretty darn good job of remaining durable. Now, it doesn't have liners like um, the Spydercos, uh, like a lot of them do. But uh, it's still a very, very durable material. You're not going to probably worry about the handle cracking on you like some of the uh the older bench made uh griptilians that were using abs plastic it's like well it's nice because it's um you know flame retardant a little bit but uh it did have the problem of uh being able to uh crack and snap and everything uh fairly easily so this thing will be a lot more durable as far as that's concerned uh, the pocket clip itself is pretty comfortable. You're going to have a uh, a bit of it sticking up for you out of your pocket, which, as you guys have probably known from me, I don't mind whatsoever, but I know it's much more popular these days to uh, to have a deep carry pocket clip on pretty much everything. I just like... This because it gives you a little bit more to uh, grab onto when you're uh, getting into your pocket. So for me, it's a little bit easier to pull it out of my pocket without shoving my hand all the way inside it with, you know, I got really large hands. So the less I have to fully dunk my hand inside my pants pockets, then, uh, you know, I'm happier. So there you go with that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I've talked about the ergonomics a little bit. It's, uh, fairly neutral. It's very, very comfortable, um, in hand. You know, obviously, uh, Bob Dozier is, uh, very well known as a knife designer for, um, and also very well known for being fairly plain, you know, very simple lines, uh, 
and uh, very utilitarian and uh, does a very, very good job at that. Uh, and for the price, this thing is uh, quite a nice deal. Um, there are a few things that uh, I wish would be a little bit different. You know, um, having a uh, being able to sharpen down to the plunge or just throwing in a choil there or something like that. That would make me a little bit happy. Uh, also, this these kind of edges back here. This one really isn't going to going to affect you because it's basically out of the equation when it's open. But um, down here, this bottom one, um, I could see them kind of rounding that off just a little bit because it's a little pointy, a lot like uh, the uh, the cold steel tough light and that that kind of groove that goes in between your fingers. It, it's a little pointy and could be knocked down a little bit. That and the fit and finish, um, you know, obviously could be a little bit better, especially if it was made here in the States rather than um, to a certain cost. Uh, that way, you know, you wouldn't have like a gap over here on this side and then over here without having a, a great way to uh, deal with that. Or the fact that you're actually seeing some of the, uh, the molding stem on there. So there you go. This guy is... Um, Quite nice. Uh, I wish, basically, back when I was really heavily using knives, uh, at the time that I was uh, managing and running a cutlery shop, uh, I was also doing um, inventory and uh, receiving uh, stuff for a, a furniture company. So, you know, I was cutting open all sorts of pallets and boxes and whatnot. And uh, I would have loved... To have this guy back then granted while I was working at the cutlery shop the initial form of this came out using AOS 8 which you know even back then was eh, it's a little bit aging steel kind of thing um, so yeah like having this guy in D2 this would have been uh, quite nice to uh, have something very utilitarian and light like this uh, granted, uh, more often than not, um, when I was doing the, uh, shipping and receiving, the two knives that I was using was the, uh, the Benchmade 940, which, uh, hey, I do actually have right in front of me, right here. This one, you know, because of the access lock, very, very convenient to open it up, uh, do that, and then I can actually open up a box, remove the six, whatever the hell was in there, you know, crystal, um, incense bead holders and whatnot, and it was, uh, very easy to, uh, do that one-handed. Uh, and the other knife that I would use a lot, and it's one that I sadly don't have anymore, was the, uh, the Spyderco Centofonte 4, which, um, they only made for a little bit of time. Uh, I think they actually still do produce the uh, the Centafonte three. Uh, the only difference was uh, this one had a a Warncliffe blade on it rather than uh, the uh, the kind of uh, sweeping point that uh, the Centafonte three had. But you know, another fairly cheap Spyderco. It was you know made in their uh, Japan factory, so it wasn't like. Um, you know, a tenacious or even the bird line sort of thing. It was, you know, a step up from there. But it was still fairly smooth Zytel handles and uh, VG10 blade. But super slicey. I, I really do miss that because it was hollow ground too. It was, mm, it was great stuff. But, uh, oh well, it's long gone, unfortunately. It um, fell out of a pocket due to a, uh, a hole in a coat that basically it caught in it yanked it out and I just couldn't find it. I think I lost it in a movie theater, unfortunately. But, eh. Oh well, things happen. So uh, yeah, that's uh, about all I can really say about this guy so far. Uh, I haven't used him a whole lot. Uh, the last thing that I probably want to bring up is the fact that um, this thing didn't exactly come absolutely screaming sharp out of the factory. Um, yeah, I'm not seeing any rolled edges or anything like that. It's just not a uh, an amazing edge overall. Like, you know, it obviously still 
It'll obviously still slice and everything like that. But yeah, that's a lot more resistance than, than I really want out of a knife. So uh, I'm certainly going to uh, sharpen this guy up. Uh, especially once I uh, actually get some more replacements of these for my uh, work sharp precision edge. Uh, I have noticed um, in the last couple of days at least that uh, you can actually order one, more than one of the, uh, the replacement diamond stones at a time. So I purchased three because I've worn out three of them. Keep in mind that's me sharpening I think about 120 knives. So yeah, those stones last quite a while, but they are a resource that you do need to replace. Luckily, as I've said, these are only like seven or eight bucks a piece. So, uh, you know, no harm done. It's just like buying another super cheap stone. So yeah, that's basically everything I got to say about the, uh, the K-Bar Dozier Folding Hunter in D2. The, uh, I don't know, colorway, whatever you'd like to like to call it. Yeah, the contrast between the, uh, the kind of brownish bronze kind of, uh, coating that they got on here and the, uh, the light blue. It's a very nice color combination. I like it and it's quite visible. So yeah, there's something else for you. Um, last thing that just kind of came to mind, uh, I generally don't honestly know exactly, uh, since I haven't really hunted myself, um, I don't know exactly how much a, um, a, uh, a spear point slash drop point kind of, uh, design is helpful for, uh, some hunting stuff. Like, obviously you can, uh, pierce a little bit and, uh, you know, do the slits down there and whatnot, but I usually feel like a lot of hunting knives have a lot more of a, uh, a trailing point to uh, help in the skinning process so you can get a, a more even and longer stroke when you're trying to, uh, you know, remove skin and whatnot. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. But, uh, you know, obviously I'm in ignorance as far as that goes as compared to uh, the person who designed it. So... <laughs> Like, unless you are uh, very skillful with uh, the whole dropping with a finger, this is probably a two-hand close for you. All right. Well, that's basically everything that I actually have to uh, say about this guy now. Uh, so, yeah. I don't really feel the need to uh, take this guy apart like I do with a lot of other knives because, well, it, just like a slip joint, these things are a gigantic pain in the butt to... Uh, put back together afterwards, but, uh, you just imagine that, um, this bar is basically wedged up under here and then it's got that pivot point there and it's, so it's always having force applied down onto uh, the blade. That way it'll actually latch in there. So that saves me a lot of time and hassle from uh, taking that apart. All right. Well, that's everything I got to say. So uh, I appreciate y'all for watching, yeah, especially if you made it this far. And uh, have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo.